Okay guys, so welcome to my newest portfolio update. This is week four. So let's quickly go over the progress of this Robinhood portfolio. Uh, I hit a milestone, I reached over $500 on my Robinhood portfolio. So all time, this portfolio is up over 2% at around $10. And over the last week since I made a video, I am slightly down a little bit less than 1%. And so far today, I'm up uh, once again a little bit less than 1%. So let's just quickly go over the portfolio. I uh, added another position to Sirius. Uh, I've been building a position long term in this company. I really like the Pandora acquisition. I'm going to be steadily gaining and it pays a nice dividend as well, which is very rare for a stock this cheap. Uh, under $10 to be paying a dividend. So I picked up a, a couple, two, five, uh, two more shares and I'm currently sitting at a very small position of only 10 shares. but. Like I said, it's only 10% of my portfolio, and I'm pretty happy with that. I'll be slowly building that over time. Uh, nothing's changed with Urban One. I added one share of Apple Hospitality REIT, and I'm ex actually really excited uh, because this month I'm going to be getting my first dividend in uh, on Robinhood General. So in Robinhood, whenever you have an upcoming dividend, it shows up as pending, so it says three shares. I'm going to be getting 10 cents a share, 30 cents total. So once again, guys, uh, one of the goals with this portfolio is to build a solid portfolio of REITs and growth companies, but but really focus on REIT stocks because over the last 20 years, REITs have outperformed all asset classes um, overall, and they've even outperformed even gold. So I think REITs and gold, those should be definitely a place in your portfolio. I know it, they're not as popular where everyone wants to talk about companies like Tesla and Apple. Fast growing tech companies are important, but I think you need gold and REITs as a solid part of your portfolio to diversify yourself and to improve your overall annual returns. So another stock that I uh, added to, Luck and Coffee. Uh, here we, uh, Luck and Coffee. Which I didn't add to Luckin actually because my portfolio allocation was at the time it was reaching uh, closer to 20% over so I don't try to put too much into uh, one company but what I really like about Luckin is that hedge funds are starting to pick it up so the price has been improving guys if you bought down here at that dip that was a real nice dip at around $13 that was a nice buying opportunity but I'm still up 20% on this. this is my best overall uh, stock pick so far like I said, this is the uh, this is the Starbucks of China, and with the whole Trump tariff war, it looks like Chinese companies are going to be kind of you know growing at a rapid pace because I'm pretty sure the Chinese are pretty angry at Trump for raising the cost of importing goods to America. So this will probably help a lot of Chinese people become more patriotic and support their own companies. So moving on. Uh, new new age beverages once again this is another growth company they're, they're really into the CBD oil drinks and this is a brand new industry in America guys we have no idea where this industry is going to go but I, I I'm betting that people are going to enjoy the drinks and they're going to be spending more money on them in the future so once again this is a very very a uh, company with very little market cap 358 million and I saw a pretty big dip in shares uh, last week you know, I had been buying it at five dollars, so when it dipped down to four, around four seventy to four eighty, I doubled my stake. So I went from three shares to six shares. I picked up another three there, and this is a hold for me. So moving on, Neo. So a lot of talk was about Neo last week, guys. I recommended it to you. Now I was pretty scared because the stock had been down thirty four percent over the past month. But I just had to keep adding because I'm really passionate about this company and I'm really passionate about electric cars in the future. I really think they'll help the environment. And I am trying to be slightly environmentally conscious on this portfolio. So when I saw this car company in China, I knew that this was a good uh, buy for me and kind of fits in with my overall goal of this portfolio to own REIT stocks that pay me every month and every quarter and to, quarter and to own high fast growing companies that are going to be profiting off of future technologies so i continued to buy under three dollars but i didn't want to buy too much because i thought maybe it was going to two dollars and we don't really know if it's going to two dollars but it does look like there is some support so if we take a look at the candlesticks it looks like there is support around two dollars and 75 cents something like that and we've seen a, a bit of a reversal in price so that's a good sign to see 
I, I definitely wouldn't want this to go down to two dollars even though I could buy more shares but I'm already down 15% on this so anytime I'm, I'm almost down like you know 25 30 40 percent I probably should just dump the stock and move on maybe I can buy it back again cheaper so right now we're at three or eight like I said anything around under two around three dollars I think is a fair price for this company they're doing better they're releasing one of their newer ES6 vehicles in the future and that should be really popular so I really like Neo guys to check them out and then HPQ nothing's really changed there just still have one share not much has changed with Gladstone Land. I uh, really like these farm REITs, but you know, they're, they're, it's a really new industry and they're so slow growing. So I'm not really looking to put as much money into them as of right now, but this for me is a, is a solid REIT and it pays a monthly dividend as well. So now I wanna talk about meat. So I've been using this app called Scout and you know, I've been using it for uh, about a couple weeks or so. And it just dawned on me that they're actually owned by meat groups. So when I looked this up on the internet and I did some research about the company, I liked what I saw. If you look at the five-year growth chart, it's up 83% over the last five years. And they're actually the owners behind Meet Me and Tag. So if you guys use any of these social networking apps or social dating apps, you've probably used them before. Pretty solid app. What I like about it is that they've recently added some new features. They've added live a uh, video chat so you can like go live kind of like YouTube live Facebook live something like that and you can buy tokens and give gifts to the people that are on live so this is just a, a cool easy way for meet me the meet me group to generate revenue from their apps and what ends up happening is they end up allow you to buy tokens and you can gift tokens to live video creators and then they can turn those co tokens into cash so what I like about meet group is that they kind of generated a basically like a YouTube like environment um, for for content creators on their app so it's not just a dating app where you can meet women or or women can meet men it's kind of has its own economy within the app so I, th I said it's pretty cool and I use the app so I decided to pick up some shares you know shares are three dollars and eighty cents near its 52 week low and I, I think long term this is a really solid company only a 283 million dollar market cap so I decided to put a stake and I'll probably be building this stake uh, in the next couple of months Again, uh, took a look at national storage affiliates. I really like these storage affiliate uh, storage, storage, sell storage REITs. Uh, basically, what this REIT does is it's similar to PSA public storage. Uh, they they leave space out to people that want to store their their belongings. You know, in America, a lot of people have a lot of possessions and they can't fit everything in their house, so they end up getting storage space. What I like about this company is that it's growing aggressively and it pays a nice dividend as well. So you can take a look at the dividend. It's pretty solid. And, you know, I think it has a lot of growth in the company. I was very impressed by the five-year stock chart, you know, 130% gain. And what I like about this company is that it seems like as long as they continue to open storage, uh, storage, um, storage, I guess storage, warehouses, yes, things like that. As long as they keep growing consistently, people keep using their services, as long as you know they continue to earn money, good funds from operations, you know I don't see any reason why this isn't a good investment. So I really like this company, and it's the fifth largest storage REIT in America. And what I also like about it, the last thing I really like about it is that it has a lot of growth potential ahead. So if you look at the market cap, 170 billion dollar market cap, and then if we look at the the biggest player in America, PSA Public Storage. 40 billion market cap. So a lot of growth opportunity there. And this company is growing pretty aggressively as well. So then the last stock that I added was Naked Share, uh, Naked <laughs> Naked Brands. So Naked Brands, basically, they are a uh, distributor and seller of women's, uh, women's, I say intimate women's lingerie and men's underwear, things like that. They have a good partnership with Heidi Klum, and they're selling Heidi Klum uh, lingerie all throughout CVS's. So what I like about this company is, is that there was recently a article in Seeking Alpha about this Swiss, uh, Swiss investment firm that put a 1.5 million dollar stake into million uh, into Naked Brands. You take a look at the article. So they picked up shares at 25 cents. And they invested, 
let's see how much they invested. I believe they invested, it says they put about, okay, 1.5 million, and they picked up the shares at 25 cents. So I thought, you know, if this, basically this investment firm was picking up shares at about 25 cents, it was highly undervalued. So look at the market cap. The market cap is just um, $5 million. So I picked up 100 shares. I figure, hey, this is a purely speculative play for me. Uh, if it goes to zero, it goes to zero. But they actually have a real product, and it does sell in CVS. So I figure, hey, I could ride this up. We'll see what happens here. And, you know, if you wouldn't believe it or not, stock at one time was as much as $11. So $11 for 25 cents. So I believe, you know, this company does trade on the NASDAQ, believe it or not. It is $0.26, cents and they do have until August to get their stock over $1. So it, I'm not really sure what they're going to do about that, if they're going to do a reverse split to get the stock price up. But I figure it's a pretty speculative play, so I just picked up 100 shares. We'll just see what happens there. And quickly, I want to talk to you guys about some of the stocks that I added to my watch list. So one of the newest ads I have is another REIT that I've been watching. Now this is a more, if you if you guys, you know, I know some people, they're not really interested in owning cannabis stocks. Maybe they're, you know, against uh, medical marijuana use, uh, depending on how you feel about this. This is a way to profit from the, the, the cannabis boom without actually owning the cannabis sellers. So what Innovative Industrial Properties does is they buy the land from the cannabis growers and then they lease it back to them and they collect monthly income so they don't actually this REIT doesn't actually sell cannabis it just owns the land that the cannabis is growing on so this is kind of a way of kind of a not a pure play on cannabis but a kind of a secondary play and what I like about this company is that um, if we can take a look at the stock chart it's absolutely spectacular so you know IPO at around 18 17 dollars something like that it's already up to 84 dollars 300 percent in the last five years and like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice REIT, you know, they pay a nice dividend and, you know, it's a really nice play. I really like this stock. If you take a look at the website, website looks nice. You know, they're, they're constantly acquiring new cannabis fields. Uh, cannabis growers are constantly selling them properties to, to get capital to in, invest in their cannabis business. And, you know, land is always going to be valuable. So I really like this REIT. Another REIT, another REIT that I've been taking a look at is Park Hotels as well. Now this one was spun off by the Hilton Group, and it's not doing so well as of late. It's kind of trading flat, but they own a lot of prime Hilton hotels all over the world, a lot of good locations in, in America, Europe, places like that. So this was another REIT that, that piqued my interest, and at a 13 uh, price over earnings ratio with a pretty decent dividend. I thought that this is another REIT that I'll be taking, looking to t take a position in. So that's it so far, guys. Uh, you know, uh, thanks for following on my journey. And uh, my next milestone is one thousand dollars in my Robinhood portfolio. So hopefully I will reach that one. And like I said, if you like this video, if you enjoy my content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I plan to do this update weekly. Not only am I doing this for me and to stay motivated and to stay consistent, but I'm doing this video for you guys as well. I hope you find some value and you get some new investing ideas, learn from my successes as well as my failures. So that's it for now. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments, any companies you'd like me to talk about, uh, maybe some things that you uh, see that I can improve on or do better. And uh, that's it for now. So thank you for watching and take care.